Is the fact that Biden's pardoning his son surprise me? No. Is the fact that he's a violent liar surprise me? No. But am I going to sit here and do nothing about it? No. That's why I own zero US dollars and I only own Bitcoin. There is no man on this planet that can lie and debase my life. And if Bitcoin goes down, down to zero, I'm willing to sink on that ship because I will not wake up and breathe air on this planet whilst another man can lie and debase my life. In this interview with the Money Matters podcast featuring Jack Mallers, we explore the impact of government overreach and Operation Chokepoint on financial systems, the role of Bitcoin as a peaceful protest against financial control, and the call for Ross Ulbricht's pardon in the context of financial justice. Bitcoin is trading at $94,000 with recent market changes highlighting its growing significance. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with the latest in crypto and blockchain technology. I am a Bitcoiner. Listen, the government is constantly lying, constantly lying. Does this surprise me at all? No. Another lie. Another lie. What can we do about it is really the reality of the situation. What we can do about it is exit. When voice is no longer sufficient, exit is the most powerful expression. Is government lying to the population new? No. No. Is government lying to the population surprising? No. No. What is new? Bitcoin. Never in the history of our civilization have we had a monetary system accessible to all human beings, distributed, not controlled by any corporation or any government that allows for exit through government lie and currency debasement? Listen, the government, and, and I've seen the takes on the internet of, you know, Biden's being a good dad. Hey, hot take. Biden's actually a good father. Listen, how much do I actually care about politics and po uh, politicians lying? I'm telling you guys, I don't want to get in political debates. Zero. I don't care about these people. Let me tell you what I care about. Monetary policy. Listen, money is our time and our energy in an abstracted form, right? Right. Money is a representation of our effort, of our labor, of our work. Every single day, everyone listening gets up and does things for the world, okay? You get up out of bed when it's cold, when it's rainy, when it's early, when you're tired, and you contribute value to society, to those around you. You produce labor, you produce work, you innovate, you create. In return for that, you get this technology we invented called money. Money is intended to protect, store, and allow you to exchange your time and your energy, your effort and your labor, okay? The fact that a government can debase our money means that a government can debase you. Say that again. The fact that a government can debase our money means that a government can debase you by proxy, your effort, your labor, your time, your energy. When gas price doubles, when your grocery bill doubles, when your rent doubles, that is debasing your life, your time, your energy. The amount of time and energy required for you to have a sustainable life that you deem worth living goes up, right? And so the fact that government is such flagrant and violent liars signals to me once again, one thing, exit. When voice is no longer sufficient, exit is the more powerful expression. So what's the point of this topic? Is, how is it related to Bitcoin? These people lie. There is no central planning group and coordinated group of human beings that should ever be allowed to set monetary policy and control our monetary supply. Because our money is a representation of our time and our energy and our effort and our labor and our life's work. And we should trust no man at managing that. No man. And for the first time in human history, we have an exit. We've engineered an exit, open source, distributed through just the sheer will of the public and the people. 
We don't even know who created this thing. This is all predicated on the values of the idea of I want a monetary policy and a monetary system that no man can take from me. And so the fact that Joe Biden is a pathetic liar that, according to the New York Times, dishonors the office. It's unfortunate, but he can't debase me. And he can't debase anybody else on this podcast because we own Bitcoin and we contribute to an alternative system that humanity can rely on. As discussed by Jack Mallers, let's explore the implications of government overreach through practices like Operation Chokepoint, the empowering role of Bitcoin in achieving financial independence, and the importance of advocating for financial freedom and justice. Money is the nucleus of a functioning society, right? Um, yes, for the first time in human history, there is something I can do. I can go run a full node. I can take all of my time and energy, my value, my labor, and I can put it into Bitcoin. And I can start educating the public and say, listen, these people can lie, but now we have a form of exit. We don't just have voice. That's the other beautiful thing about Bitcoin, guys, is it's a peaceful protest. Listen, I disagree with Biden government all the time. I, <laughs> I'm not marching outside Washington, D.C. and getting in spouts with uh, police officers and security. And I'm not marching with a sign that says like, please stop lying. Please stop lying. Please stop printing money. And I don't need them to agree with me. That's the other valuable thing. If Biden disagrees and he thinks lying is the way to run a country, I just buy Bitcoin. <laughs> I don't I don't need the guy to agree with me. I don't need to get violent with anyone. I don't need to go march and protest outside of the White House. All I have to do is opt in to an open source project. That's the beauty of this entire thing is that I get to protect myself, my family, my time, my energy, my loved ones, my life. The future of my life, I get to protect peacefully. And I don't need these people to agree with me. That's the problem with like gold bugs is go, like we need to go back on a gold standard, back on a gold standard. I, like I don't need if people don't like Bitcoin, that's their loss. I don't give a shit. Next, Operation Choke Point 2.0, 1.0. Actually, I was just talking to my parents and uh, I – there are some stories – all right. Let me tell you guys. First of all, Operation uh, Choke Point 1.0, 2.0. If you guys have not listened, go watch the Mark Andreessen, Joe Rogan podcast episode after this. If you don't want to watch the whole thing, there is a specific clip. There's a specific clip that talks about Operation Choke Point. What is Operation Choke Point? Operation Choke Point is an effort from the U.S. government to debank people that oppose them in a specific way that they don't like, whether that's politically, whether that's through industries like cannabis, industries like adult film, industries like guns. That was Operation Choke Point 1.0. Mark Andreessen laid this out on the Joe Rogan podcast and then talked about more recently Operation Choke Point 2.0, which was political opposition, crypto, Bitcoin, and other variants of technology. There's some stories about AI. The relevance of all this is after the Joe Rogan podcast, it seems like everyone got the moxie and the bravado to share and tell their stories where everyone was like, whoa, it's okay that we talk about this publicly now because I've got a story. No, I've got a story. No, I've got a story. And now it's a floodgate. I got this tweet, which I thought was hilarious from Jesse Powell. Jesse is the founder of Kraken. And he said, TLDR, the government is Harvey Weinstein. The Me Too floodgates are open and the stories are pouring out. It's 100 times worse than any of us knew. We've been silent for too long, afraid of the consequences of speaking out. If you don't understand the vote, you are privileged. Listen, bang, bang. So let me tell you guys something. Listen, I was texting my parents and there's, I don't want to, sometimes you don't want to share every, every, everything. Um, but I certainly have some operation choke point stories. Strike's been debanked multiple times. Um, 
my parents were in the cannabis industry, which is still to this day debanked, tons of struggles. Um, and I've even had some bouts with the IRS where I was very convinced that the IRS was specifically coming after uh, me and us. And so I've seen Operation Choke Point. It is very real. What I will uh, tell you guys, I'll tell you guys a few stories from Strike. This was 2021. Uh, we had a bank account, Strike had a bank account with Chase, JP Morgan, Chase, Jamie Dimon. We had told Chase that I had walked into Chase and I had said, hey, I need a bank account. Um, I'm starting a Bitcoin company. And the guy at the time said, take that back. Pretend you didn't say that. And I was like, what? What do you want me to lie? I'm starting a big guy. What do you want me to do? I need a way to accept deposits. And he said, uh, you're a technology company. Do you understand? You're in IT. You're not in Bitcoin. Don't say that word in here. And if you're a technology, I'll open your account. And we said, okay, fair. And that's what happened. He marked us down as a technology company and we opened an account. Bitcoin wasn't in our name. The parent company of Strike is called Zap Solutions Inc. So hard to derive that we're a Bitcoin company just from our name. And we opened the account. We closed the funding round with venture capitalists. The money came in. I was operating payroll. Um, I had hired employees. Life goes on. Fast forward to early 2021, so about a year later, we get a call from Chase that we have days to get out and that we were being debanked. We have no bank account. They're closing our account. Get all the money out and never talk to you again. And we tried to ask why. No answer. No answer. Unclear. Everyone was just like, well, my boss is boss. Well, you're going to have to talk to this guy. It was ne We didn't do anything wrong. They didn't tell us for any specific reason. It wasn't a specific transaction they were concerned about. They just said, listen, you've got a few days to get out and get off our platform. We can't tell you why, but we will never talk to you again. I was in El Salvador. I was in El Salvador working with Kelly. I was talking to, to the government there about Bitcoin. We were working on Bitcoin adoption. And I got a call from an employee saying, we cannot process payroll in a few days. We have employees, people that need to pay rent, buy groceries, run their family. And we have nowhere to put our money. Nobody will open us a bank account. We don't know what's going on. We don't know why. We only have a few days or else our company is kind of just like rendered bankless. Like I can't run strike on cash. I have employees all over the world. And that's a real true story of just a classic startup in 2021. No one really knew who we were. I don't think, I don't know. And we used to speculate back in the day, was this something I said on TV? Was this something I tweeted? Cause I've been, I've held nothing back in what I think about Jamie Dimon. What I, I mean, I've, I've said, I've referenced Jamie Dimon as Epstein's banker on live television. Um, and, but it's free speech, land of the free, home of the brave. Um, I'm allowed to say what I want and everyone is and people are mean to me all the time and I appreciate the public opinion. Uh, I never once considered that it would debank me. I, it's, I'm, I was affectionately, strike was affectionately, uh, affectionately sanctioned as if I, like we were Russia or Iran or something. We were sanctioned from the banking system. It was insane. And none of us ever knew why that happened. We were speculate on like, oh, Jack, you got to, you got to stop talking about people on the internet or you got to stop, watch what you say on television. You know, no, we never knew still to this day, we don't know. But as time went on, it became pretty clear that we were part of the operation choke point. Another classic story is uh, we were customers of Silvergate bank. That was a crazy, crazy story is I'll never forget working with Silvergate on some features and we were excited about potentially using them more uh, for some pretty cool stuff. And we got a call. I got a call from the CEO, Alan Lane of Silvergate, who, by the way, I have nothing but respect for. Alan returned everyone their money. Um, he was not running, you know, a super duper fractional reserve banking system. Um, Alan as far as I'm concerned, is the only banker in the history that upon government pressure returned all deposits and said, 
There's nothing I can do and close shop. So this is not against Allen whatsoever, but I got a call from Allen that effectively said um, the gig's up. And I was like, why? What's going on? You guys, software break, something go bad? And he said, no, um, they're just not going to let us operate anymore. And I'm paraphrasing. I'll never forget that because it was like, what? Why? It was bizarre. It was bizarre. I would highly encourage you guys um, to check out the Mark Andreessen, Joe Rogan episode. Uh, Operation Choke Point is absolutely real. I've had my own experiences with it. There are plenty of stories. But what's the TLDR? I've been debanked many times. Uh, I've been a part of a few industries that have been involved in the Operation Choke Point. Again, it is, I mean, the two topics we're talking about, Operation Choke Point of the government actively debanking people they don't like, and we're talking about Biden pardoning his son, which is just actively and, and very bluntly lying to the general public and the population that he is governing. It is absolutely mad. And the one thing I didn't mention is, listen, if President Biden is pardoning his son, who's committed how many ever heinous crimes, we are pardoning Ross on day one. Let me make something extremely clear. Strategizing on how to bail out the United States of America with Bitcoin, how to back our future promises, how to stabilize our debt, the fact that we have active senators that are writing bills, trying to pass them into law using Bitcoin to strengthen this country in our biggest problem, which is the very fiscal spending and fiscal deficits that these politicians created whilst letting one of the heroes that bootstrapped that very open source network, that bootstrapped the very value of this new money, rots in prison for the rest of his life is an affront to any sense of morality and human dignity, period, period. If the United States has realized that Bitcoin is pro-freedom, pro-technology, pro-growth, it is the digitization of capital. It can help this country in many ways. We will not let Ross Ulbricht rot in prison for the rest of his life. It is a time to realize he has served his time and to let that man free. He helped bootstrap this money, this open source network, this open monetary system that might very well save the foundings of America and the principles that back this country. And it is a front to any sense of morality and human dignity if we let that man rot in prison whilst using Bitcoin to advance this country, period. So if Joe Biden is going to pardon his son, we are going to pardon Ross on day one. To watch the full interview, check the link in the description. Jack Mallers offers invaluable insights into the intersection of technology, finance, and individual empowerment. We would love to hear your thoughts on some questions. Do you see Bitcoin as a viable tool for achieving financial freedom? How do you think government policies impact the adoption of cryptocurrencies? Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it with your friends to stay informed about the latest trends in crypto and financial technology.